Welcome back to the RPG Maker MV Tutorial Series Level 2. Today we're going to be talking about the final boss and this is the final tutorial for this level. Congratulations, you've made it all the way through to the end. Let's make a game. So here we are back in RPG Maker. Now if you recall in level 1 we created a boss and this is our boss who was an orc. He said you've come far and then he, we, we did some battle processing of the boss orc in our database. Okay, we had our enemy and we actually created a boss orc enemy and then we created a boss orc troop which uh, troop is probably better thought of as an encounter. So we created a boss orc encounter and we set it so that he loses automatically. Uh, and uh, when then we win the game. So let's just have a look. When, uh, when the battle processing is finished um, self switch A is turned on fade out the screen, change transparency on, and transfer player to the ending screen. So we won't be doing that this time, but let's just take some of those principles and apply it to level 2. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new boss. So we've got enemies, um, so let's make uh, bosses. So we'll just put something in here like this, and we'll call them um, dungeon bosses. That'll do it. Give ourselves a few more, so let's go up at 20 and we'll make it uh, 25 for the maximum. Perfect. Right, now our first boss is going to be the stone boss. Um, and uh, we might want to make it so that they are fairly heavy. So in, in uh, our new data set, we've got this orc and he's got 2500 HP, so that's pretty impressive. So let's just copy him and we'll use that. So let's start with um, that as the stone boss. Yeah, we're not going to do exactly the same thing as level one. Let's be a little bit tricky. So what we want to do is let's find. Do I have a click on the image and we'll change that to a gargoyle? Okay, so we've got a new stone boss. We'll give him five thousand hit points. Say because we can double an orc. Okay, well if he's got uh, five thousand hit points, we may as well give him some more magic magic points. So give him like a hundred. Uh, we can maybe make him 75 on that, uh, 60 on that. Magic attack can be 50, and magic defense can be 50. His agility can be 50, and his luck can be 50. Got to be a boss. Okay, we'll give him a thousand experience points. He's uh, he's worth a lot, and uh, you can drop a thousand gold. Okay, um, drop items could be anything you want, but uh, let's say that on average he generally drops a. Um, large elixir. Okay, and uh, maybe he drops some kind of, um, of weapon as well. Okay, so we can say large elixir and uh, weapon. Uh, he might drop a mithril sword with probability of, well, let's say one in one. So he, autom he will definitely drop a mithril sword and he will give some kind of um, wyvern mail doesn't really make any sense, but uh, that's fine. Let's, well, maybe elemental cloak. So he drops an elemental cloak. So he's going to drop some some excellent um, thing, and there's a pretty good chance he'll drop a good item. Uh, we set up his attacks now. These numbers are um, a bit tricky. Usually, they're if you look at the sort of defaults, they're set to higher. But uh, I just li like to make it a bit easier for myself, so I know that um, one, two, three, four is the, the this is the sort of lowest priority. Then it starts to get higher and higher and higher. So the highest priority is the one that will be done first, if possible. So dual attack and strong attack take up. Um, so the uh, gargoyle in this case will um, we're going to call it stone boss or, or gargoyle. Okay, so he will he will actually use heal uh, if he when he drops below fifty percent he'll use heal um, as a highest priority and um, other than that he'll do dual attack and then he'll do strong attack and then he'll do attack if he can't do any of the others. Uh, now I mean he's a gargoyle so we can change his attack element to earth or stone. Um, and uh, we can also give him another special attack. So let's look for some interesting special attacks. So um, if you recall on the skills, uh, with our expanded database, we've got enemy skills, and there's things like, for example, Petrify. That sounds good for a, uh, an Earth-type creature, and maybe we'll do Earthquake. So let's go back to our enemy, and we'll go to attacks, and we'll find uh, Petrify. Okay, and we'll find Earthquake. Alright. OK, 
Okay, now if I go back to my skills just real quick. So let's see, um, Petrify uses magic points 20 and Earthquake uses magic points 100. So let's just make sure that he's got enough to do both of those. So maybe he could do um, 240. That gives him the opportunity to do Earthquake twice uh, and uh, Petrify up to two times as well. Fantastic. Now we don't want to just always do it, so let's just um, say Petrify. We can give this a condition. So we'll say he might uh, try to do Petrify on turn 3, uh, and then he might try to do Petrify um, every sort of third turn after that. And let's say the Earthquake, uh, he tries to do it when his hit points are between 50 and 75%. Okay, now, as you can see, he can also cast Heal 1, so uh, we'll just go back and check that. So, Skills, Heal 1. Uh, we've actually tweaked that so that it doesn't do damage, in instead it actually recovers 25% of your HP. So, he will recover 25% of his hit points, uh, which um, is like 1,250 points. So that's, uh, hit points, so that's quite a lot. Okay, now we can see that uh, Heal 1 has um, a priority of 4, Petrify is 5, and Earthquake is 5. So, that means these two are both higher priority then heal one, which we don't want, so let's just um, cut that, we'll paste it down here, and uh, so that'd be four, five, six, so let's put heal one as um, priority a rating of six. Um, so the highest priority, once again, is the one that is um, most likely to activate. So uh, we probably want um, Earthquake to activate um, over Petrify, so we'll put that Petrify at four, so that'll be our new priority list. So um, one is the lowest priority on the list and then heal one is the highest. So now we have the enemy set up, we need to create the encounter. So we click on troops, that's roughly an encounter. We change the maximum so that it's um, higher and then what we can do is we can do something like, same again, dungeon bosses uh, and we can just put that in here and then we can put an encounter for our stone boss. Okay, so I might just call this um, stone boss encounter and uh, we're going to be a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an orc to our stone boss encounter to start off with. Now, when our orc's hit points go below, say, 25%, what we're going to do is we are going to set it to say something like, Curses, you're too strong, I'm out of here. We're going to add a series of effects, including this monster four roar, flashing screen, shaking screen, we're going to fade out the screen. Then we're going to say something like, not so fast, you may have defeated my... Now we don't have a actor image for the gargoyle, unfortunately, so this is a bit of a limitation once again. I might just put this in the middle and dim so that it just looks a bit different. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the enemy appear option. Okay, now we want to set enemy appear and we want to choose our gargoyle, but it's not on the list. Why is that? So let's go back and have a look, because he's not in here. So what we have to do is we have to have our stone gargoyle here. Right, excellent. So we want him to appear in the middle. So we go enemy appear. Okay, now we can put him to appear there. Now he's still um, uh, visible here, so I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to do appear halfway. So now what I can see is that he will not be visible at the beginning of the battle, but he will be visible uh, when this enemy appear command is activated. So just running through that again, let's just remove him. So the first thing, uh, we can even clear him out. So you'll, you'll add an orc. Okay, you've got your orc there. Set up this. Then we're going to also add a stone gargoyle. We're going to right-click the stone gargoyle and do appear halfway. Put him behind the orc. Then we're going to add a line here, which is enemy appear, and then we'll choose the stone gargoyle. The next thing we're going to do is to force action, and we're going to force the orc to use escape. Last target is fine. Uh, escape is, just so we don't lose any of that progress, escape is a skill and uh, if you click on here, you can see escape, and it just forces the user to flee from battle. Special effect, and escape. Pretty straightforward. 
Uh, that's in the defaults there. Okay, now that's critical. And uh, now the last thing is because we did a fade out of the screen, what we're going to do is we'll just do a screen fade in. So uh, we go back here to page two and fade in screen. Save all of that. Okay, so before we go to playtest, we've just mixed it up a little bit. So uh, we'll say curse you're too strong. We'll fade out the screen. Um, enemy appear, and then we'll force the orc to escape. Uh, I'm not sure if that really makes a difference, but um, yeah, I just feel better having the enemy appear before the before the orc flees. Um, add in a little delay. Play a sound effect of a devil. Um, play, show some text. Uh, then we'll fade in the screen. If we don't fade in the screen, um, then we actually can't see uh, the flashing and the shaking of the screen. So we may as well do, better do that first. Um, play another sound effect, and then we'll wait 60 frames. Just set the orc to 90% um, hit points, uh, to, to flee at under 90% hit points, so that uh, he flees really quickly for testing. Now if you remember from level 1, you can just hit battle test, and uh, you can set up your heroes the way that you would like them to be. Um, at the time of the fight. So uh, I've assumed that we're level 10 and we've got some fairly decent um, weapons and armor and so let's do a playtest. So we hit OK and up comes out. Now uh, we've set the battle background in the encounter to look like this but I, I believe it will take on the, the background of the dungeon. Um, don't have any special attack that we can do so we'll just regular attack. Uh, she can do windmill. Got some magic going on here. We've got magic here. Okay. And so there we go. A, little, a couple of special attacks. And they're too strong. I'm out of here. Orc flees. Here comes Evil Laugh. <laughs> Shaking and roaring. And then we go back to the battle. Perfect. Alright, so how do we activate our boss? All we need to do is we go back to where we had our orc, uh, we change our battle processing to our stone boss encounter. Uh, we can't escape, and then uh, we can do something like, for example, we could turn on a switch to say stone boss has been defeated. And that is our first encounter. So, what can we use that uh, switch for? Well, for example, we could put up some uh, blank uh, encounters around the outside here um, that say the same thing that they show the you've come far and battle processing uh, and then do the switch if the boss is defeated nothing happens on that page you cover those all around here and um, and then what ha that gives you is uh, that will enable the player to walk into any of these squares and trigger the switch so they can't get through the door without fighting the boss ah, so let's just test that out uh, so we've got the cheat mode, so we'll go into a little bit more about cheat mode in a second, but you can see even if we come into this corner here, uh, it will activate. And then the orc will flee, and then we'll have a fight, but because we have cheat mode, we win. And off we trot. Okay, so cheat mode. Um, we explained very briefly last time. We set up a common event. Um, it runs in parallel. So if the page up button is pressed down, if button page up is pressed down, uh, run cheat mode on or off and show choices. Then control switch cheat mode on and control switch cheat mode off. Now, what we missed out there was to ha how to apply that to your enemies. So what you need to do is set up a page on your enemy, and uh, the condition is uh, switch cheat mode. Okay, and during the battle, and then just change the enemy state, entire troop dead. Um, you could do something else, so if you wanted to just give yourself um, some amazing powers or whatever, you can do whatever you want, um, but uh, this is how you would activate that cheat mode um, to kill troops. And uh, one thing that we can do um, on this level is, for example, instead of killing the enemies, we can just uh, set um, the orc to have uh, less, 200, you know, 2,250 points less, and so that way he he goes right down to 10% health and um, and then runs away immediately. Um, and you could then add another state here if cheat mode is on, then um, change enemy state for the troop dead. So that would be the way you'd kill the boss. So you still get to see the the introduction um, and the follow, the flow of this uh, battle, but um, you would then um, yeah you still just wouldn't have to run through that. So one other thing that we can briefly touch on is big bosses. Um, so here we have set up a lava level. Uh, we've used the skills from our 
um, our dungeon generator um, episode and we've uh, created a quick dungeon and then we've just quickly filled in some of the stuff on the end here and um, you can see that we've we've set up an event now this event is going to use our big monster tile and um, we've set that to okay we've set it to direction fix so that uh, otherwise what happens is it'll actually flip between these different um, big monsters and uh, it's stepping so that's going to be uh, stepping is animated um, so when you touch the tile uh, Dragon Wars channel challenge and then it will do battle processing and we set up a lava boss encounter um, and uh, when it's complete the lava boss defeated is on and then second page will get triggered um, we have also set up these blank squares here so that um, no matter where the player steps uh, they will uh, automatically encounter one of these squares. So let's see the effect of that. Let's say your player tries to sneak around here, and there we go. There's the challenge, and here's the dragon. Just got cheat mode on, so we automatically win. And there's our wonderful boss effect, and off we go. Okay, so now we have a full set of bosses. We have an Earth boss. We have a Fire boss. We have an Ice boss. And we have a Cursed boss. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial series. Thanks for sticking through it, and I uh, hope that you learnt a lot. I certainly have. Um, we will create a summary of uh, what we've learnt so far and show you some of the things that we've applied to make a, a fairly extensive playable demo. And uh, we think that you can too. So um, look forward to seeing you in level 3 where we learn how to customise our game so that we can use our own images uh, and we can use a whole bunch of other stuff that uh, will make it more unique uh, to you. Thanks for sticking around and let's go make a game! That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons as they do help with the algorithm. Now it's your turn to go make a game. See you in the next one!